let's take a look at the conservation of linear momentum. The big equation in this chapter is this. In simple terms, the total linear momentum for particles in a system is constant from the beginning time period to the final time period. We can use this when we have particles that collide with each other. Imagine there are two boxes and they impact like this. We can use the conservation of linear momentum to figure out their velocities right after impact if we know the initial velocity and the mass of the boxes. It's a lot easier to understand this when we look at a few examples. The questions you will face in this chapter heavily relies on principles from previous chapters, like linear impulse and momentum, conservation of energy, and more. So if you forgot those principles, please take a look at the description to get back up to speed. Let's get started with some examples. In this problem, we need to find the maximum compression of the spring after the two freight cars collide. Let's first figure out the speed of the cars after they impact. To do so, we can use the conservation of linear momentum. We will assume movement to the right to be positive. So we have the mass of car A multiplied by the initial velocity of car A plus the mass of car B multiplied by the initial velocity of car B. This is negative because it's traveling the opposite way. All of that is equal to the mass of car A and the mass of car B multiplied by the final velocity. It's important to realize that once the cars collide, they are now attached and travel with the same velocity. We're assuming that they will travel to the right. That same velocity is what we're trying to find. Remember that a megagram is 1000 kilograms and to convert kilometers per hour to meters per second. Let's solve for velocity. So this velocity we found tells us that after the cars collided, both of them move with a velocity of 2.7 meters per second to the right. Now to figure out the compression of the spring, we need to use the conservation of energy. This is a very long equation, so let's break each component into pieces and add it up. So first, we have T1, that's initial kinetic energy of each of the cars. Remember, kinetic energy is half times mass times velocity squared. Next, V1, which is the elastic potential energy, and that's zero since the springs are not compressed or elongated. For T2, we have the final kinetic energy with the final velocities. And lastly, for V2, we have half times the stiffness of the spring times the compression squared. Remember, the stiffness is 3 meganewtons, which is 10 to the power of 6. Let's add it all together and solve for the compression of the spring. So when the cars collided, the spring was compressed by 0.48 meters. In this problem, we need to find how far the block will travel after the bullet becomes embedded in the block. We can head straight into an equation of conservation of momentum and we will assume right to be positive. The goal is to figure out the speed once the bullet is embedded in the block. So we have the mass of the bullet multiplied by its initial velocity, then we add the mass of the block, but remember it's not moving so velocity is zero. On the other side, we have the mass of the bullet and the mass of the block multiplied by the final velocity. Let's solve. So we get 3.96 meters per second, which means that once the bullet is embedded, both the bullet and the block travel with that velocity. The next step is to figure out how long it took for the block to stop moving. We can figure that out using the principle of linear impulse and momentum since we have forces, time, and velocity. Before that, let's quickly draw a free body diagram of the block. So we have the weight, normal force, and friction. Remember, the mass of the block is actually the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block since it's embedded. Now on to the equation. First, for the vertical movement of the block. We will assume up to be positive. The initial momentum is zero since the block is now moving upwards. Then we have the impulses. So we have the normal force multiplied by time and the weight multiplied by time. All of that is equal to zero since the final momentum is zero because the block doesn't move in the vertical direction. We can divide everything by t which gets rid of it and allows us to find the normal force. Next, an equation for the horizontal movement and we will assume right to be positive. So we have mass times initial velocity which we found before, then we have the impulses and only one force is affecting the block in the horizontal direction which is friction. So it's the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force multiplied by time. On the other side, the final momentum is mass times velocity. 
we're going to leave it this way and isolate it for velocity. This equation we found represents the velocity of the block with respect to time. If we want to figure out when the block stops, we can plug in zero for velocity and solve. So we find that it took the block 2.018 seconds to stop. We're almost done. The last step is to use this time to figure out how long the block traveled for. One thing to note about this problem is that you cannot multiply the velocity by the time we found for the block to stop moving. The block will not move at the same constant velocity until it stops. Friction will continually slow the block down until it completely stops, which means we will need an integral to find the displacement. For that, we need to relate velocity, time, and displacement together. We can use a kinematics equation for that, which is velocity is equal to ds over dt. Let's isolate for ds and take the integral to get an equation for displacement. Now we can plug in our velocity equation from before. The time starts at 0 seconds and the upper bound is 2.018 seconds, since that's when the block stops moving. Solving gives us 3.996 meters, which is how long the box traveled for before stopping. In this problem, we need to find the distance block B moves when block A slides down the ramp. So first, let's think about the problem and analyze the diagram. When block A slides down, the horizontal component of its velocity will push block B to the right. So block B will have a horizontal velocity to the right, and block A will have a horizontal velocity to the left. Keeping this in mind, we can write an equation for the conservation of momentum, and we will pick right to be positive. So we have the mass of block A and B multiplied by the initial velocities. Since the system starts from rest, the initial momentums for both are zero. On the other side, we have the mass of block A multiplied by its final velocity plus the mass of block B multiplied by its final velocity. Remember, block A is moving to the left and we picked right to be positive. We can isolate for the velocity of A. Now we need to think back to relative motion of two particles. If you don't remember, please see the description below. For that, we need to use this equation. Remember, we're only thinking about the horizontal velocities. Let's plug in what we know, and again, we will pick right to be positive. Since VA is moving to the left, it's negative. Let's isolate for the relative velocity. If we integrate the velocity, we get the displacement. We see from the diagram that from point O, the relative displacement is 0.5 meters. So to figure out the distance block B moved from the origin, we can plug it in and solve. We got 0.07 meters, which is the distance block B moved when block A slid down. That should cover the types of problems you will face in this chapter. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helped. Best of luck with your studies.